Good morning. Good morning, everyone. You're very welcome. I see everybody's coming into the room. Come in, come in, come in. I hope you're all nice and comfy. Are you feeling a bit tired today? Is anybody feeling a bit tired? You can put up your hands if, if you're feeling a little bit, bit tired. Do you see a little button that says raise your hand? If you're feeling a bit tired. Oh, oh, a few people tired. Tell, tell you what, before we start, show me all the magic hands. Stretch them into the sky. Stretch and tickle the sky. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Oh, that feels good, doesn't it? You're all extremely welcome to day four of Farm Safety Week. This is the fourth webinar, and we're doing it especially for the eight to 12 year old age group today. But it's okay if you're a little bit younger. I'm sure you'll learn loads as well. And today we're gonna to focus especially on the number one. I need to see all the magic hands again. Show me the number one. Give it a workout. One, two, one, two, one, two. The number one fingers, because the things we're gonna talk about today are the number one dangers on our farms. Tractors and machinery. And we're also gonna talk a little bit about quad bikes and something else as well. And we might meet a couple of my friends along the way. So if everybody is ready to go, everybody is nice and comfy, let's begin. And I'd like to first of all say a big thank you to Flowgans for making these webinars possible. And I've got details on a really brilliant competition that we're gonna be running at the end of today's event. So without further ado, let's look at some of the things we might see on our farm that could be machinery or vehicles. For example, what is that? Hands up if you've ever seen one of those. A lot of you, wow. Mm -hmm. I have one down here, look. Oh, it's very heavy. We're gonna be talking about this today. Yeah, the PTO. We're gonna find out what it does, where it goes, and what we use it for, and why we have to use it. And we're also gonna be talking about my very good friend, Peter, and saying a big hello. Oh my goodness, it's very heavy. And say a big hello to Peter later on. What else are we gonna be talking about today? Definitely. Can you all wave at my friend, Alan? Yeah, that's the quad bike on our farm. Sitting there behind, we have Polly in her stable. She always has her head out. She's so curious, she's so cute. Hi, Polly, and hi, Alan. And Alan, as you can see, is on a quad bike. So we're gonna talk a little bit about quad bikes because we have loads of weave horses over in the far field and Alan has to use that bike to bring over buckets and bags of meal to feed the horses there. So quads are really important. But we're gonna find out how farmers need to be really careful whenever they're using a quad bike. What else do I have in my, oh, show me the number ones again. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Tractors, we gotta talk about tractors guys, don't we? And guys, if you see the Q&A, tell me throughout the event what your favorite tractor is. I'm pretty sure some of you are gonna be saying a John Deere. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are gonna be saying a John Deere. Mm -hmm. So, and, and if you want me to say hello to you, or if you have a question, or if you have any answers, pop them in there. Big hello, first of all, to Matthew and Kieran Ryan. Hi guys, big hello to David in Tipperary. Hi David, that's my dad's name, did you know that? Good man, David, you know the PTO. We're gonna see if you know what PTO stands for. But don't worry, I'll be telling you this later on as well. A big hello to Charlotte James, straight in with the John Deere. I knew I'd have a John Deere. Nicola, Nicole likes the Massey Ferguson. Good girl, Nicole. Alad and Emrys Jones, they're into the Massey. The Massey is classy, isn't it? It is indeed. New Holland, Matthew and Kieran. Fair play, we're gonna have, we have a New Holland up there. Do you see that? And right beside it is a case. Any case people there? Hello to Finlay and Lona Orla in the north of Scotland. It's wonderful to have you. Is that Iona or, or Lona? Iona, I think it is. And Orla in the north of Scotland and Finlay as well. Great to, great to have you guys along. We have another John Deere coming in from David. Rowan likes a New Holland. Mm-hmm. Scottish borders, great to have so many people from Scotland. Oh, Dara would like to just tell everybody that Massey is the best in, in, in the world. Dara and Adam Grimes are saying that Massey is the only one. Dites is our favorite from Ewan and Gethin in North Wales. My goodness, New Holland from Elliot and Cavan. I think I've got some serious farmers in my group today. So without further ado, let's go 
to the number one and talk a little bit about tractors. Because guys, this is important stuff. Did you know I have a tractor on my farm, okay? Mm -hmm. And the back wheel is bigger than me. Now normally, when you look at wheels on cars and stuff like that, you're looking down on them, aren't you? They're, they're kind of down there a little bit, but not with a tractor. Oh no, no, no. You're kind of looking up at them, but they're much bigger. And like, if I stand up, I mean, I'm not really massive, but I'm not tiny. So for a back wheel to be bigger than me is a big, big tractor. So this could be you guys, and you're not even up to the top of, of, of a back wheel of, of a tractor. And if the wheel is to there, I'm even higher again when I'm inside my tractor driving away, sitting inside the cab. If you look up towards the ceiling in the room that you're in right now, that's where I'm gonna be seated, up there inside my tractor. It's pretty far, isn't it? And when I'm seated all the way up there, all I can see is what's out in front of me. Mm -hmm. I can't see who or what might be on the ground below. And I can't hear you. I might have headphones on. I might have the radio on. So it's pretty much soundproofed inside my tractor cab. So guys, the nearer we are to a tractor, the least likely you can be seen. So you gotta always stay well back when the tractor is doing its, its work. Because when I'm in there, I'm thinking, oh, I have to move sheep today. I have to fix a fence. Oh, that field needs to be, to be plowed quick. I have to bring bales in. I'm thinking of all the work I have to do. And I'm probably not thinking, should I be looking out for somebody? You know, is Dara or Adam around or is, is Charlotte around? No, I'm wondering about all the work I have to do. So guys, remember, you gotta stay back. So let's practice. I wanna pretend you're standing at the gate and you're looking into a field and you can see a tractor and it's very busy. I, I think it's mowing because it's hay time, isn't it? Yeah, we're mowing, we're on second cut right now. Woo. It's mowing away, okay? Let the farmer know that you're there. Pretend it's me, I think they're mowing away, okay? Let the farmer know. Now you can't shout, because I can't hear you. It's soundproof, remember? And you know, I'm probably too far away. So how are you gonna get my attention? How are you gonna let the farmer know that you're standing at, at the gate? Put your hands up, put both hands up. Wave, wave at the farmer, come wave. I wanna see loads of waving in Scotland and Wales, come on. And I want to see loads of waving in Ireland too. Come on, that's it. Well done. And when the farmer waves back or maybe beeps the horn, then we know you're there. And that's a great way to let the farmer know and to help the farmer out, okay? Because people love to see tractors. But remember, the closer you are, the least likely we can see you. And that's why they're the number one danger. Do you want to see a picture of me when I was little? You sure? It's always important to know where to be when a tractor you see, okay? So here's me when I was little, and my mother was so happy that myself and my sister were wearing a dress, she took a picture. It was the 80s, guys. We didn't really take a lot of pictures back then. But as you can see, in the background, my dad was mowing hay, wasn't he? Yeah, we were getting hay ready. He had his little mower, and we had an international tractor. Yeah, that was the international tractor that we had. And myself, and that's my brother Derek, and my sister Emily, we were always so excited when the tractor went into the backfield so we could have a closer look. But we always were told, stay well back. And I mean, look at the size of that, that tractor. Do you want to see the tractor we have now, today? It's a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, so look. Small, big. Small, big, much bigger. And look at the, and that's why, look at the size of that, that wheel. And we were sewing here. And look at the bales. Like before, we were doing little square bales of, of hay to feed our cattle. We had beef cattle on our farm. And now we use much bigger bales. We have, we have horses and we have a few cattle, so we use a lot for our bedding. All right, much bigger. So the tractor I grew up with was kind of small, but the tractors you guys are growing up with are enormous. And that's why we've got to remember how to be super careful. So do you remember, when I'm driving in my tractor, this is what I see. Oh my goodness, what is that? It looks like a bird did a poo-poo on my tractor. How very rude, how very rude. But if you can see, we're plowing, and I can see a fantastic view in front of me, but up close, 
there's loads of blind spots, isn't there? I can't really see too well. And when I have the, the, the loader on, all here is, is a blocked. And even though I've got big mirrors and they're nice and clean and there's no cracks or nothing, I still can't see that much. I can see all the seagulls having a few worms in my plowed field, but I don't see a lot else of what might be going on back there. So guys, remember, we always got to stay back because the blind spots inside tractors are right up close. You can't be seen here and you can't be seen here. This is all I can see, okay? Now, you guys can remember that. You're well on your way to becoming amazing agri-kids. And remember, when you become an agri-kid, you become experts in farm safety. Mm -hmm. And that means you get to boss the grown-ups around. That means you get to tell them what they can do to be safer on the farm because you're going to be experts in all this, okay? Now, your first job though, if you're going to become real agri-kids, is to think about this. And I remember a few years ago in Britain, there was a fantastic campaign called Buckle Up for Iceman. And it was when a group of young farmers got together to remember their friend who got killed in, in a tractor. And they said they wanted more farmers to start wearing their seatbelts. Put up your hand if you put on a seatbelt when you get into a car. Let's see how many people put a seatbelt on. Oh, well done, everyone. That's brilliant. And we put on seatbelts because they keep us safe when we're inside the car, don't they? So I was thinking, if seatbelts are so good for cars, and if there is a seatbelt inside a tractor, do you think the farmer should put it on? Hands up if you think a farmer should put on their seatbelt if they have one inside their, their tractor. <laughs> well done. Everybody's putting their hands up. Absolutely. So a little job for you guys today is to have a chat with any farmers you might know and ask them, oh, I, I, I was wondering, do you have a seatbelt inside that, that tractor? And if they say, yeah, will you show them how to put it on? Yeah, we can have a practice. All right, will we have a practice? Okay, here, here we go. Everybody pretend. One, two, three. Click. How long did that take? A few hours? A few seconds? And it makes all the difference. So it's really important that we all start remembering to put on our seatbelts. Let's have a look at a few people putting on their seatbelts. Great job. I was wondering though, how long do you have to be to be a passenger inside a tractor? Well, depending on where you are, it can be a little bit different. In Southern Ireland, where I am, you have to be seven and older before you're allowed to be inside a tractor and only if there is a passenger seat and a seatbelt. If there's no seat, then there is no you, okay? So you don't go in there if it doesn't have a seat and a seatbelt, especially for you. But if you're in the United Kingdom, for example, you have to be 13 before you're allowed to be a passenger inside a tractor. And again, only if you've got a seat and a seatbelt. But to drive a tractor, well, that's kind of similar for everybody. You get your, you get your license, and at 14, you can drive a tractor just around the farm. But remember, you've got to do some training first. You can't just hop in there and go. So you can go to the likes of Lantra or FRS and get training, which is brilliant, isn't it? And at 16, with that license, you can actually drive a tractor along the road. Yeah. And it's really important that, you know, that, that you're sensible and smart when you're 16 and you're driving a, a tractor. Like, no, using your phone and ringing loads of people. Oh, no. Super smart and super sensible, they make the best drivers because there are some 16 year olds and they're brilliant, but there are some and, and even older and they're, they're not very good. So no phones, just super smart, okay? So what else do we have to talk about today? Let me, you know what, before we go on, let's see if I have any questions for anybody to say hello to. Hello, oh look, who, Hello to D Dara Grimes, 16, to drive a tractor. Absolutely. Well done. Well done. Hello to Sophia and John. Lovely to have you guys along here today. Hello to Emer and Barry. Wonderful to have you today. You're coming in today from Monaghan. That's amazing. And guys, if you want to put in more about what tractors you are like, you're absolutely more than welcome. But what are we going to talk about next? Let me see. Mm. I was wondering, because we've done so much on tractors now, that it might be a good idea to help the farmers out. Maybe do a little bit of a checklist for when they're about to start driving their tractor. So I got myself some paper and a pen, and we're gonna do the farm 
checklist. There's the tractor checklist. Are you ready to go? Because I have a tractor here. Now, they took the branding off, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a New Holland tractor today. So there's a few of you going to be very happy about that, isn't there? Yeah. So when it comes to driving our, our, our tractors, it's very important that we look for special things to make sure everything is working and everything is in good condition. Because when we're driving our tractors, it's very important, first of all, we can see, mm -hmm. have to see where we're going. It's also very important that we know we can make the tractor go and the tractor can actually move and do its work. It's also important though that if we can make it go, that we can make it stop as well. And it's also important that as farmers, we know how to kind of keep ourselves safe when we're working inside our, our tractors, that we don't slip or fall or, or trip and hurt ourselves. So there are the four main things we got to look out for. So what areas on our tractor are going to help us out here? Well, when it comes to being able to see, it's really important that our lights are working. Mm -hmm. And not just the ones at the front, the ones at the back too. And look, up on the roof, we have our beacon light. So if the tractor is driving down a country road, and maybe the hedges are a little bit, bit high, we can see that light flashing along. And look, I have a pretend tractor here. You see the beacon is up there? Yeah, very important. So that's very important that we're able to see. We have our lights, we have our beacon. What else helps us see with our tractor? Oh yeah, the windows and the mirrors. Do you remember the birds did a little poo-poo on my tractor? That was here. Well, on a farm, there can be a lot of poo-poo and there can be a lot of mud, yeah? So it's really important that if we get a lot of mud and poo-poo all on our windows, we keep them nice and clean so we can see much better because all the top half of the cab is surrounded by glass, front, back, and at the side, to give us as much visibility as possible. And the mirrors too, really important that they're not broken or cracked or dirty, because look, they come out on an arm and they can see right towards the back of a tractor. So they're really important that we're able to see, so to keep them clean and in really good nick. And they're all the areas on a tractor that helps the farmer see. So we tick all them off. So let me see, we have lights, check, Beacon, check. Mirrors, check. And what else? Oh yeah, the windows. Keep them nice and clean. Now, to make our tractor go, what do we need to make our tractor go? I, I don't think I can see. Oh yes, underneath the bonnet, what do we have? We have the engine, don't we? Inside there. And that's really important. If we don't mind that, that, that little area there, if we don't mind that, then all of this doesn't work. So we need, we need our diesel, our fuel, don't we? We need oil, we need fluids to keep everything in good working order and nothing seizes up and stops. What else, what else helps our tractor to go? The tires, yeah. Make sure you got no punctures or no soft tires. You won't be getting too far and nothing slows down a day on the farm than a puncture in the tractor. Mm -hmm. you have be waiting a long time to get that fixed, especially if you're stuck in a field somewhere. It's awful. They're all really important in helping to make our tractor go. But if our tractor can go, we need to make sure our tractor can stop too. That's also important, isn't it? So what helps tractors to stop? What do we have to look? Does the farmer have to check? Oh yeah, inside the cab, it's the brakes, isn't it? We need to make sure that they're working. Okay, because so the tractor can stop properly. Is there anything else though? Yes, those tires again. They help us go, but we need to make sure that they're good enough to help us stop too, and that they're not kind of bare or bald because we don't want to get any skids on bits of mud or oil or anything like that. So that's all really important. That keeps the tractor good, doesn't it? Better tick all those things off. Now let me see what do we we have our brakes, yeah. We have our tires. Two ticks for the tires and a big tick for our engine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're doing very well, but there's one other area we're gonna have a look at here for our tractor checklist. And that's the us farmers. We gotta be careful when we're working in and around tractors that we don't hurt ourselves. So how can we do that? Oh yes, if you see inside the cab, we need to make sure we don't have any rubbish or litter on the bottom of the cab, like bottles, for example. 
my husband, Mark, he had a bottle and he was drinking because it was really hot. It was harvest time. It's really important we drink loads of water during harvest time to keep ourselves hydrated because it can get very hot and we could be in there for a long time. And he just, you know, kind of put the bottle down, but it fell onto the floor and he didn't notice. And as he was driving, the bottle was kind of rolling and it rolled woo, underneath the brake pedal at the tractor here. And it got stuck under the pedal. So when he tried to stop, the pedal was kind of stuck a little bit. But thankfully, it was really soft plastic and it, he was still able to squash it down. But he got a bit of a fright. So now, right behind his chair in his tractor, do you know what he has? A little box. And he puts all his rubbish in there so none of it falls onto the ground. And what else do we have to do to make sure we don't slip or fall? Oh, yeah. Remember I spoke about all the mud and the poo that might be on a farm? Well, we've got to make sure that the steps into our tractor are kept nice and clean so we don't slip when we're coming out or even climbing in. We might fall forward and give ourselves a really nasty bang. Okay, so we tick those off as well. Yeah, we've, we're not going to have any rubbish on the floor of the cab. No, uh, and we're not going to have any mud, dirt or grime on the steps into our tractor because we don't want to fall. So look, our checklist is done. We're all set to go and drive our tractor. I wonder though, is there any more tips that we could think about? Well, we we'll talk about those very soon, but there's something else we got to talk about first. Hands up guys, if you've ever heard of something called the safe stop. Because when we're out driving our tractors, it's really important that we know how to stop them and park them correctly because I know we're going to be tired when we're finished our day's work and we're probably a bit grumpy because we're probably hungry. Do many farmers out there get a bit hangry? Yeah. So it's really important though that we, we, we park and stop our tractors properly and carefully. So the HSA and the health and safety executives, et cetera, came up with something called the safe stop. And, and it, it's really good. And I know in Ireland, we have a really good tool here that we can stick up inside our tractors and put all the you know, tractor details into these little pockets. And it also reminds us of the different things about the safe stop. But, and I don't want to be rude, but I think we could do a little bit better. So let's have a little chat about the tractor safe stop and work out what exactly it is. Hmm. So first of all, when we're driving our tractors and we're finished our day's work, we got to stop, don't we? And maybe reverse park our tractors, maybe into a shed. And it's better to reverse park the tractors into a shed because that way the tractor is facing in, in the direction it needs to go when it starts its work the next day. It's not trying to reverse out of a shed where it's a little bit hard to see. We can drive straight out where we got the best visibility. So we're going to stop and reverse the, 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 the tractor, maybe into a shed, something like that. Then we need to make sure it doesn't roll forward or back. So we got to be sure that we turn on or take up the handbrake. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now, we need to make sure that all those controls that we used are kept in neutral. So we're going to take it out of gear so it doesn't jump forward maybe when you start it the next day. And if you have a loader on, on your tractor, and I, I, I do, I have one here. I have a loader here. If you have a loader like this on, on your tractor, when we're driving, we have it up. But when we park our tractor, we always make sure we put the loader down. And that's because it's hydraulics that lift that up and down. And if it happened that once the hydraulics fail, we don't want that to come crashing down onto somebody. So we always leave it down when we're not using our tractor and when we're parking it up. The ignition, the engine, we don't leave that running. What if somebody hopped in and stole our tractor? And it's an awful waste of fuel as well. And diesel is pretty expensive. So we've got to make sure we turn the ignition off. And then, and this is, this is really important, guys. Do we leave the keys inside a tractor? No. What if it's stolen? Do you know how much a tractor costs? Well, think of a car and price of a car and double it. And then maybe add on another price of a car on top of that again. So a tractor could be like three times the cost of a car. And we definitely wouldn't leave our keys inside a car in case somebody came along and stole it or if somebody hopped into our tractor and tried to drive it and they didn't know how to drive it. So we always make sure we take out the keys. So those one, two, three, four, five, six steps is the safe stop. 
But I think that's very hard to try and remember all of those things. So I'm going to teach you guys a very special way to remember to say stop that you will find so easy to remember and it'll make so much sense. So let's look at these again. We're going to stop and reverse park. We're going to stop and reverse park. That's a good word. Yes. Okay. We're going to turn on or to take up the handbrake. T -t 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 -t. Okay. I like this. I st that, that could be a word. Now the gears, the controls, put them in neutral. Take them out of gear. Uh, oh, I like that. And the loader. This is easy. Remember, don't leave it up. We're going to put the loader down. I see a word. Hands up if you see a word. Stop. But we're not finished yet. No, we've got two more to do. The engine or the ignition needs to be turned off. Stop it. Stop it. That makes no sense. Oh, the keys. T -t 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 take out the keys. What does that spell? Stop it. Well, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? I think that's a great way to learn the safe stop procedure for a tractor. So agri-kids, the number one is for mine farmers, maybe about their seat belts. Number two, let's all remember the yes, stop it. So we all know how to correctly park and stop our, our tractors, okay? Tractors are great, but there's so much to try and remember, isn't there? So it's good to know that I am recording this session and I'm gonna make it available later on, okay? Now, I actually asked my husband, Mark, for his own tips when it comes to kind of machinery and tractors and he had two brilliant ones the first one was this how to get out of a tractor properly some people like to face forward and maybe jump which isn't a good idea because you could fall forward or you could slip and we don't want that to happen so mark always makes sure that when he's getting out of the, the tractor he's facing it and he's holding on to the handle at the side and the handle in the door and he climbs down, okay? So that way he won't fall forward or back, okay? Because he's holding on and he's facing forward like that. He's facing back into the cab. Another thing he likes to do, we've just done our second cut of a hay, of haylage, so we're, we might get a third. We don't know, fingers crossed. We could do it a few more bales, we really could. But, do you see these? When you have your rake or your tether, these are tines, T-Y-N-E-S, and they're really important because they are, gather up the, the, the grass and they shake it out so it dries in the sun. But you know what? They can be really sharp too. And when our tether is out working, it's like this, but when we're finished, we fold it up. So those tethers rise, those tines rise up right there, you see? So some are high up, but some are at eye level. They're eye level with, with Mark, you see here? And Mark's a tall guy. Okay, so he was afraid one day that he would turn turn around and one might accidentally go into his eye. So what he did, he got some of the, the plastic wrap, the bale wrap, and he wrapped up those tines that were right at his eye level to make sure there wouldn't be any accidents. Hands up if you think that's a pretty good, good tip. I'm going to put my hand up there too. I think that's a pretty good tip. Well, yeah, guys, it, isn't it? That will make sure everybody keeps nice and safe. So that's how farmers get out of, of a tractor. And a handy little tip is to tie up those times. Mm -hmm. We see if anybody has any questions for me. We didn't know that you need to be 13 to be a pastor in the United Kingdom. Yeah, it's, it's 13. It is indeed. And it's seven here in, in, in Ireland. And the reason why, guys, it is seven and, and, and older is because up to the age of seven, your little heads are still a little bit soft from, you know, when you're like a little baby and stuff. OK, so you know how bouncy tractors can be. OK. So if they were to bang their head, you would get a really nasty head injury if you're a very young, young child, much worse than you or me or, or, or older boys and girls. And also a young child, are they going to sit there nice and quiet? No, they're going to burst into talk like, what the, what the, what the, you go toilet. And they're going to distract the driver from what the driver needs to be doing. So that's why the older, the better, but only if there's a seat, click with your seatbelt. OK, because, guys, remember, it's the number one. And I want to keep you all so, so safe. I know tractors are great, but we've got to be so, so careful around them. I want to say a very big hello to Killian Fitzmaurice in Roscommon. Hello to Abby and Murray in Aberdeenshire. They helped your dad on the farm. 
He has a new Holland tractor. I love the new Holland tractor. Brilliant. And a JCB load all. That is amazing. Guys, if you have any pictures of your tractors and your machinery, will you send them in to me? Info at agrikids.ie. I'd love to see some of the machinery that's on the farms out there. Big hello to Elliot Hegarty. Great to see you. Dara Grimes talking about the battery inside a tractor. Super important. If you don't have a battery, you definitely don't, don't go. The brakes, exactly. The mirrors, Elliot, good man yourself. Alad and Emrys Jones, your fields are cut. I am absolutely delighted. Congratulations, guys. What was the farmer in your family? Very, very happy. Yeah. Dara Grimes, stop it. Isn't that a great, a great word? Great way to learn the say stop procedure. What else are we going to talk about today? Let me think about this. Oh, remember we, we saw this at the beginning, the PTO. I'm going to reach down and pick it up again. So excuse me for a moment. Because it's quite heavy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Whenever I go into schools to see boys and girls, they sometimes think I've brought in a rocket launcher. Yeah, or a, a weight. But it's not a weight, it's a PTO. Hands up if you think you know what PTO stands for. Or more importantly, pop it into the questions and answers. Right here, let's see. Who knows what PTO stands for? Alan Nemrus shows we have a McCormick. We have a McCormick too. That is brilliant. And all your tractors are vintage. My dad loves vintage tractors. He has so many. He just absolutely does, loves them. Matthew and Kieran are going to be bailing on Friday. All the animals are going to be looked after. Alad and Emrys Jones, power takeoff. Well done. Nicole Cashman, power takeoff. I am so impressed. Give yourselves a big round of applause. There are many older farmers who don't know what PTO stands for. Now, did you know, though, that the PTO turns really fast? And this is how it works. You see this bit here at the end? Okay? It's called the yoke. Yeah, they were very lazy when they were labeling a PTO. They call it the yoke, the thing, the yoke, right? So I catch that to the back of my tractor. I want to hear the click. I know it's incorrectly. And as soon as I turn on my tractor, you see this metal bar? See how it turns? That begins turning super fast. In fact, it's turning anywhere between nine or 16 times a second, depending on the horsepower or speed of your tractor. So can, can you count to nine in one second? One, 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 one. No, it's two. So that's how fast that is going. So this turns really fast. So why would we need something like this on, on our farm that turns so fast? Well, PTOs are really important. There's going to be a lot of these coming out now, combine harvesters. And you see the header on, on the front? Powered by a PTO. Mm -hmm. What about, oh, hedge cutters? Powered by the PTO. It takes the energy from the tractor to turn and power the piece of equipment that we need to use. What else is powered? Oh, the mowers. Uh -huh. You see the PTO there? Yeah, and it's well covered. That's a great job. And oh, and we were talking about this a little while ago, the tether, and there's the PTO there. Absolutely brilliant. I think that looks, looks like a golf course, actually. Yeah, wouldn't be too much hay coming off a golf course now, would there, guys? So PTOs are really, really, really important. But the thing with PTOs is, and remember here, who was with me on Tuesday? We were talking about, about slurry. Remember the slurry spreader? It spreads because of the PTO. And the agitator? Powered by the PTO. They're super important, aren't they? The thing with the PTO is that bar turning so fast, no long hair, no loose clothes should ever come in contact with that. Okay? So I don't want anybody having a horrible, horrible accident with that. So that's why, you see my cover? We cover that up. We cover it up and we lock it into place. But not just that. That's, that's not enough. No, no, no. You see on our PTO here? we got chains on. Those chains are just as important as the PTO cover. And here they are. One goes on where the tractor is, and one goes where your piece of kit is. And when those chains are on, nice and tight, nothing can move. Nothing can, can, can budge. It's absolutely brilliant, okay? Got to be on, okay? Because I don't want this happening to anybody, okay? Awful accidents can happen with a PTO. And in fact, I have met quite a lot of people on my journey in, in farm safety who have had an accident with a PTO, okay? And in fact, I'd like you to meet one. Say hello to Peter. Look at Peter here. 
what's going on? He looks like he's about, he's actually about to laugh, <laughs> doesn't he? But has Peter got something missing? Yeah? Yeah. A few years ago, Peter had an accident with a PTO and he actually lost his leg in that accident. But Peter has since spent all of his time talking to farmers, talking to boys and girls, all about why farm safety is so super important. And Peter was very lucky on the day of his accident because he had with him his son, Ryan. Ryan was about 10 or 11 at, at, at the time. And as soon as he saw his daddy was in trouble, you know what Ryan did? He was able to stop the PTO from turning because he hit the emergency button and he immediately went to get help. Okay, and that was, so can we all just give Ryan a big clap for doing that? Because he actually saved his daddy in that particular day. All right, he's a great boy, absolutely great, great boy. Okay, but Peter now goes all over talking about farm safety. And one of the things he really talks about is how important it is to have good equipment. For example, guys, if you had a pencil, right? And the nib was broken. Is that a good pencil? Hands up who thinks that's a brilliant pencil. That's fantastic, nothing wrong with that. I can write loads. Yeah, it's awful, isn't it? You can't write with that pencil. And look, look, if you, even if you made a mistake, you can't even rub anything out. Is that a good pencil? Hands up, guys, if you think that's a brilliant pencil. Yeah? Yeah, <laughs> nobody put... Hands up who thinks it's a, bit, it's a little bit rubbish. Hands up who thinks it's a rubbish pencil. Yeah, well done. It, if you've got bad tools, guys, you don't do a good job. So, you need to have a good pencil with a good nib and a rubber in case you make a mistake. Okay? So, good pencil... <laughs> not a good pencil so it's just like the, our equipment on, on the farm if our equipment and our accessories and our tools on the farm aren't good then we don't do a good job right, look at this pto cover what do you think of that it hands up with things it's fine it's grand it could be perfect hands up who thinks i need to get rid of this immediately hands up who thinks like guys these are great yeah, it's rubbish, isn't it? Yeah, no, we can't have that. This got too hot because it was spinning so fast. So you have to keep all this grease so it's loose and the, and the bar can, can, can rotate properly. But if you don't, it gets really hot, dry, so it cracks and it shatters. And that bar then is fully exposed and we don't want any little hands or anybody's hands going in, in, in there, okay? So PTOs are great, but we gotta be super careful around them, okay? All right, we're gonna say bye-bye to Peter because there's somebody else I want you to all, to all to meet. Before we meet my next friends, let's see if anybody has any other questions. Remember guys, if you have any questions or just want to say hello, pop them into the, the q and A. I'll be only delighted to say hello to you and find out a little bit more of where you're from and what your favorite tractor is. That's super important. At the moment, I think John Deere just has a slight edge, which I'm shocked. I thought it would absolutely be, you know, top of, of the game. So I'm bringing you back, Alan, because what we're going to talk about now, and it's the last thing we're going to be talking about today, and it's all about quads and quad bikes. And we use quads for loads of stuff, like whether it's feeding the horses in the far off field, or whether it is look, inspecting the fences, or whether it's inspecting the hedges, uh, even out to, to count livestock. They're really important. Okay, they're absolutely brilliant. And another word for quads is all-terrain vehicle, ATV. But we've had a huge amount of accidents involving, um, involving quad bikes. So I thought it might be a good idea to fill you guys in on some good tips. So maybe you might spread the word to some farmers that you might know. So do you know when you were learning how to read and write and everything else, we all learned our ABCs. Well, I thought, why don't we put quad safety into ATVs? And that would be a great way to help us remember a few key safety tips. So first of all, in our ATVs is age. How old are you? Well, you have to be 16 before you're allowed to use a, the typical quad that you might use around a farm. And it's not just about being 16. Whew, happy birthday to me, I'm 16 today. Ooh, I can drive a quad. That's not enough, oh no. You gotta make sure you know what you're doing. You gotta have a bit of training done because they can be quite complicated, okay? And all farmers need to have, have a training before they get up on their quad bikes, okay? Now, it's also important that, you know, a bit like our tractor inspection and our tractor checklist, that we keep an eye 
on how our quad is actually working. Is it in good repair? Remember, good tools, good job. So the things we need to look at on our quad bike include the engine. So again, you know, we've got fuel, we've got fluids, we've got water and oil in there, really important. Um, we also got to look at, at the tires, no flats, no ball tires, we don't have anything walking, tipping, okay? Um, and also make sure that there's been no, been no damage, like <clears throat> somebody reversing a tractor and hitting the corner of the quad and not telling anybody happened on our farm, not saying anything else about that. Okay, so we've got to make sure that there's no damage that we mightn't have been, aw been aware of. But probably, and again, let's show all of the number ones. What's really important is the PPE. And with COVID and everything, we all know what PPE stands for, Personal Protective Equipment. So it's very important that we look and have proper safety equipment when we're using our, our quad bike. And to help us a little bit more with the safety equipment, is another friend of mine. So say bye, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Bye, Polly. I'll feed you later. And we're going to say a little hello to my friend Noel. Noel knows everything about quad bikes. He is really, really clever. Mm -hmm. And he teaches a lot of people about how to be safe on, on quad bikes. And the kind of things he likes to talk about is, first of all, putting on a helmet. Helmets are really, really in, in, in important. Okay. And you see, he's got his helmet on there, but not just that. He's got a visor, yeah? And the visors are good because, you know, when you're, if you, when you're on quad bikes, maybe a lot of flies, this time of the year especially, a lot of flies might be blowing into our face or dust and everything else. So we've got to make sure we have that. And this might look heavy, but it's not. This is really, really light. But listen, that's pretty good, isn't it? That's pretty solid. And also, we've got to make sure we close our chin, our chin straps. Okay, so we have the helmet. That's fantastic. But uh, Noel has also said that sometimes it can be a bit sunny, a bit, a bit of a glare, or maybe he just wants to look cool. I'm not sure which. But if, it, if there is a glare, sunglasses can also be, be used because the, the advisor, it is very good at getting rid of flies and dust. But if there's a lot of sun, it'll be quite hard to see. Now, what else has Noel got on him today? Oh, yeah, long sleeves are quite good. Okay, now I know it might be a very hot day, so we might wear a t shirt on a hot day, but if it is cold, the long sleeves are very good for protecting our elbows from scratches or bruises if we do have a tumble or brush off branches or anything like, like, like that. And if long sleeves are good, then also long trousers are good too for helping protect our, our knees. Okay, now no flip flops, no roller skates, no high heels, no stilettos when we're on a quad bike. Good boots, good grip, good soles, okay? Because again, a bit like the, the steps on, on the tractor, if they got a bit mucky and a bit, bit wet, you, you could slip, okay? And so having good grip there is really, really, really in, in, important. But not for now, possibly, but in the winter, it can get really cold, especially when we're going out in the early mornings, and I, I never like that, okay? So we sometimes wear nice, nice gloves as well. And the gloves not only keep our hands warm and our knuckles warm when, when we're driving, but if you see there, you see this? I've got a little patch here. It's kind of rubber. Great for grip. You get great grip. So if you feel the handlebars are a little bit, bit slippy, us farmers, we like to use a little bit of grip. So grip is important. Being able to see is important. And always protecting that head. Okay, now he's got a very important message here, No. Okay, remember we spoke about being a passenger in, in a tractor only if there, there's a seat with a seat belt. So one seat, one passenger. Two seats, two people. Okay, on a quad bike, how many seats are, are there? Hands up who thinks there's one seat. Does anybody think that there's two seats? No, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Two people think, well, there is one seat. One seat on a quad, so it means one person. Now, I know that seat is pretty long, isn't it? You're thinking, but there's loads of room. No, we have to be 16, remember, to be on, on a quad. That's, that's one. And no passengers, because that seat has to be that long, because if we need to be able to adjust our weight by moving forward and back. Okay, because if we're going up a hill, we have to sit, slide forward. If we're going down a hill, we have to kind of sit back a little bit. And that helps us adjust the weight of the quad. And if we can't adjust the weight properly, then we're at risk of toppling over, okay? 
So it's really important that one person, one passenger, to make sure the balance and the weight is kept right. Okay? Now, ATVs, age, training, visual inspection, and safety equipment are very important. But I found some people who don't know their ATVs. Mm hmm Oh, no. Now, I know they have helmets on, but look, we have a passenger here, and they look a little bit young, don't they? They don't look 16 either, so they look too young. So no passengers, but they do have helmets on, okay? Over here, passenger, mm-mm. And look, no helmets. Really, really important. The helmet is so important, guys. I can't even tell you how important it is. Even if we're riding horses, we wear he uh, he helmets. We're on our bikes, we have the, the helmets on. That's a motorized vehicle. We gotta make sure we protect our heads because that's where all our brains are. That keeps us all nice and smart, okay? So remind the, mind the farmers, we have seat belts to remind them of, we have stop it to remind them of. We know to keep back from tractors. We know what PTO stands for. We know to keep the PTO covered. And we know now to keep our heads covered too by wearing a helmet when farmers are on their, on their quads, okay? Well, that was a bit of a whistle-stop tour this, this morning, wasn't it? I hope you got loads out of it. But because now you've, you've, you've stayed on this journey with me, you are now an agri-kid, which means you're an expert in farm safety with a specialist subject of machinery. So I want you all now to make your agri-kids promise to me, okay? And to everybody, because by making your agri-kids promise, it means you're all going to be much safer farmers when you get to farm in the future, okay? And remember, boss the grown-ups around. You have my full permission, okay? So raise your right hand, guys. Let's make the promise. I promise to never go to a farmyard on my own. I promise to never approach an animal I don't know or without the owner's permission. I promise to keep away from all farm machinery when they're at work. And by making that promise to me today, you're all going to be tremendous agri-kids and brilliant farm safety ambassadors, okay? And who'd like to take part in a little competition? Mm-hmm. Well, I want you all to design your own farm safety poster. Yeah. And well, then I want you to take a picture of it and email it in to me at info at agrikids.ie. I've got some fantastic flow gas goodies to give away, along with a couple of agrikids special bits and a, and a 20 euro one for all voucher. For my listeners today in the United Kingdom, I will have an, an Amazon voucher for, for you guys. The closing date is the 10th of August, so you've got loads of time to think about it. Maybe you're going to do something on tractors, or maybe if you're listening on Tuesday, you might do something on the animals and the signs. But if you're not sure, don't worry. Today's session has been recorded. All the sessions will be recorded, and they're going to be up on the AgriKids YouTube channel, so you can look back over them, and maybe that will give you some good ideas. If you have any questions, guys, just email info at agrikids.ie and I'll be happy to answer you and to help you out. I want to say again a big hello to Leo and Louie. They have case tractors. We had a case tractor at the beginning. That's amazing, guys. Hello to Killian. Killian, you love Landini tractors. And you've got six little suck calves and you're busy feeding them for the last few weeks. Killian, will you send me in a picture of the little suck calves? I think they are so cute. When I was little, we used to go suck, 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 suck. And you come up with the lick off your fingers and everything else. They are so cute. That is absolutely gorgeous. Very best of luck with your little suck calves now, Killian. Scott and William Pringle, number one. Exactly. Well done. And hello. Bye from Elliot and Kevin. And a big hello to your sister, Grace. I hope you haven't gone yet. But no, no, you haven't. Absolutely brilliant. To have you guys today and it also oh thank you so much Alan and Emrys Jones listening in in Wales today guys thank you so much you're more than welcome I'm so glad that you in enjoyed it also to um I have Mark's S to see Mark you are so welcome as well and bye from Elliot and Cowan again and your sister Grace I hope you got that oh, okay guys thank you so much for listening today thank you to Flowgas for making it all possible it is going to be available on YouTube very soon take another look at the competition, details there, and I look forward to seeing all, all your entries. And remember, you have until the 10th of August, so you've absolutely loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of time. Until next time, guys, stay safe, take care, and see you all soon. Bye.